Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel, my name is Alex with my Tangerines. In today's video we have a new stride comparison between two shoes, the Mizuno Prototype Pure and the Mizuno Prototype Elite. These two shoes are close in many ways, but they are also different and we want to find out which one is better for you out there. Today we're doing it in a new setup. We have new offices here at Meta Endurance and we have a new uh, gym in the offices with some nice treadmills. We're going to use them to have a controlled environment for the test uh, and see which of the two shoes is actually uh, responding better for my running and then maybe you can get some takeaways for you in terms of which one you should get. Let's dive into it. All right, so the plan for today, unlike for the other stride videos that we did, is to do uh, an ABBA song. No, I'm kidding. But the idea is to do an ABBA testing method where I'm going to go prototype pure, prototype elite, prototype elite, prototype pure. But anyways, the pace is going to be the controlled element, uh, the input, and then we'll see if the power is different for the different parts of the test. I'm going to do uh, K reps, so 1K, 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 four times by K, uh, and I'm going to switch shoes after the first rep and the third rep. You know everything, let's dive into it. And now let's go to the studio to check the data. We did the test at about a marathon pace for me, three minutes and 50 seconds per kilometer, 345 on the treadmill, 350, that's what the stride pod reported. There's a small difference, but that's how it goes usually with treadmills. Now, one key element is that on the treadmill, you do not get the air resistance. So the number, the power number that is reported might be a bit lower than what you would get, what I would get, what you would get outside. Anyways, thank you so much Stripe for sponsoring this video. Stripe, like I said, is an amazing tool to compare your, your shoes, to analyze your runs, but also most importantly to train because training with power is just so easier. All right, and without no further ado, let's dive into the Stride Power Center. The Power Center is the tool, the software, the interface that you have on your desktop if you want to uh, check your runs. I pulled the two runs that we have with these shoes. To be honest with you, I did an ABBA testing method this time. But for some reason, one of the runs uh, didn't record, and therefore we're just comparing two of the runs and not one for each shoe and not two for each shoe, like we should do. The solid line that you see here on the left hand side is the prototype pure and then the dotted line is the prototype elite. As you can see with the two shoes we have a moving time and a pace of 351 minutes per kilometer. That's about a 605, 610 minutes per mile. We have this segment that has been recorded. We'll look into the data but first let's quickly look at the footpath comparison. The footpath comparison is a representation in space in three dimensions of um, how your feet are moving when you're running, your gait cycle, basically. So what you can see here from the front is that there's only minor differences. It seems like uh, the solid line, so the pure, is slightly more centered, whereas the elite is slightly more, there's more dispersion with the, with the elite. This could mean a bit less stability with the elite and maybe a bit more of an efficient gait cycle with pure. Same if we look at the lateral side, they're very similar feels like the Elite has a bit less of a, of a high back kick and the back kick of the Elite goes a bit more backwards. We'll see if that translates into uh, stride length. Um, I'm curious if there's any stride length differences. If we look at both from the back, also very limited differences here. I will be honest with you, the two shoes do feel fairly similar. I have a preference between the two, but that's after testing them for uh, quite some time. If you put both and you just close your eyes, it's actually quite hard to tell which is which. And you know, the, the footpath comparisons uh, says just that. And then from the top, uh, again, a bit more centered with the pure, the side line, as you can see, is a bit more inwards and the uh, dotted line, the dash line is a bit more um, outwards. But that's pretty much it. The footpath comparison doesn't say much this time around, because like I said, both shoes are very similar. Now let's compare some of the metrics on the right hand side of my screen. I have the sideline again, the first morning run is the pure and then the second morning run, I didn't rename them, is the elite. If we check the power output, uh, which is the amount of power I generated to sustain that pace of 3 minutes 50, 51 per kilometer. We have 304 watts for the pure and 304 for the elite the exact same amount of power I generated with both shoes to cover that pace. 
Now, if we look at the cadence, cadence can be a good proxy for many things. Here, it's slightly, slightly higher with the pure, slightly lower with the elite, 170, 169 steps per minute. Not a big difference, not a big difference. Form power, what is form power? Essentially form power is the amount of power you're generating to go vertically. So when you're running, obviously you're moving forward, but you're also bouncing. And form power is a good indicator of how, how efficient you are when you're running, because the higher you bounce, the less efficient you are. And you're supposed to be you know, as steady as you can, as flat as you can to avoid uh, losing energy bouncing vertically. Form power is again very similar, slightly lower with the uh, pure 74 watts, 75 watts with the elite, but the numbers are again very close. Now I, I wouldn't look at heart rate simply because I wasn't wearing a chorus or any strap, chest or arm, I was using only my watch and because the watch sensor is not ideal, I just wouldn't rely on any numbers that you see here. Uh, let's look at ground contact time. Ground contact time is the amount of time I am spending with each shoe against the ground, and then the rest of the of the time you're on against the ground is in the air. The more time you're spending against the ground, the, the worse, in a way. The lower the ground contact time is, the better, because technically that means a shoe is more responsive, and it just makes you feel, um, it just makes you spend less time against a surface. So technically that's better. There are some studies saying the contrary, but I do believe that a higher responsiveness can be proven with a lower ground contact time. Uh, we're looking at 195 with the Elite, 198 with the Pure. So slightly better um, responsiveness or uh, ad hoc value for responsiveness with the <clears throat> with the Elite. Now, I think one very interesting metric will be vertical oscillation. So vertical oscillation is how much you're moving upwards and downwards, up and down at each stride with your body. It can You can take a reference at your chest level or, or at your hip level. Let's assume it's the hips. So your hips are moving up and down, up and down, up and down, because when you're running again, you're moving forward, but you're also moving up and down. Now with the pure, we're looking at 8.47 centimeters. With the elite, we're looking at 8, um, 81. So I'm much more efficient with the pure. I'm not bouncing as much with the pure. To a certain extent, I think this is also, yeah, form power is also a bit lower with the pure. So there's a good correlation between the two. The difference, to be honest with you, is not uh, dramatic. We're, we're talking four millimeters. So it's, you know, just that. But that times the number of steps you're taking throughout a marathon, for instance, can be more significant. Let's also check leg spring stiffness. So leg spring stiffness is um, a metric that represents how much energy you're storing in your legs, just like a spring would store energy and then release it. It's pretty much the same. The higher the number, the better, because it means that a certain shoe, a certain pace, if you're comparing paces, but here at the same pace that a certain shoe is offering you the ability to store more energy and to release it more dramatically at toe off. The values are different and that's one of the only values that are uh, significantly different here in this test. Vertical oscillation is lower with the shoe but the difference is not dramatic. Leg spring stiffness is a bit different. We have 9.4 kilonewton per meter with this shoe, with pure, sorry, and with the Elite we have 9.8. So in theory the Elite is offering you more of that ability to store energy and release it at toe off compared to to the pure, which I think is quite interesting. Essentially, the question would be, do you want to be slightly more efficient with the pure? It's a lighter shoe. It's a shoe that will cost you a bit less effort to carry throughout 42 kilometers. Or do you want to be a bit more springy, bounce more in the air, have a bit more of that forward push sensation, which you will get with the elites. And to me here, we're, look, we're looking at something like, do you want a marathon shoe or maybe even a half marathon shoe? Or do you want a 5K, 10K shoe? And I think this makes sense because the two shoes are so close and without these numbers, I almost wouldn't be able to tell you how to use them. But now that I know uh, that the numbers are, you know, a bit more efficient for this one and a bit more, let's say, dynamic, bouncy for um, the Elite, I think we have a 5K, 10K shoe and a half marathon marathon shoe. It might be a bit too simplistic, but I think this um, at least helps me understand how I would use the two and hopefully it does help you as well. Uh, understand how to use the two shoes. 
impact loading rate, so how much impact each stride is creating on your body, on your lower legs, how much um, detrimental it can be throughout the course of a marathon. The numbers are very similar. We have 79 for the pure body weight units per second, 80 body weight units per second with the elite, so nothing very different here. With everything I said, and something that we'll add, and hopefully that will be more relevant in the future videos than with this one, where I don't think I have much insights for you, how each of you can learn which of the shoe is right for them. If you're a stride runner, a cadence runner, lighter, heavier, if you're a beginner runner, advanced runners, let's cover a few different types of runners and see which of the shoes I would recommend. Stride versus cadence. I think because here we have something where efficiency rules with the pure, I would say cadence here, and stride runners with the, the elite. Remember, stride and cadence runners in proportions, a stride runner will increase more their stride length compared to, the, to their cadence. The cadence will also go up with a stride runner, but the stride length will increase more in proportions for a stride runner. And uh, vice versa for the pure, uh, for the sorry, cadence runner, the runner for whom I recommend the pure, their cadence will increase more compared to their stride length, which is also increasing, but um, less in proportions compared to their cadence at faster paces. So cadence runner, stride runner. If you're a lighter runner, let's say sub 65 kilos, 60 kilos, 130 pounds, more or less. If you're a heavier runner, uh, let's say, you know, above 90 kilograms, 200 pounds, more or less. I, I think here there's not a dramatic difference. Uh, if you're a bit lighter, of course, the lighter shoe will suit you better. If you're a heavier runner, I think you can go with both of them because they're fairly stable and the compression set of both is really similar. If I had to be a bit more specific, I would say heavier runner with the elite, lighter runner with the pure, but I don't think this is really, really that um, accurate this time around. Beginner runner versus advanced, not a dramatic difference between the two shoes. I think you might feel a bit more supported as a beginner runner with the elites, but I'm not even that sure it's, it's true, so I would say you can pick any of the two depending on, on who you are. And then distances, 5K, 10K, elite, half marathon, marathon, pure, and that's for me. If you have a different view, let me know in the comments. These shoes are releasing very soon. Hopefully you get to try them because I really do believe they're um, top tier in the first two tiers uh, of my tier list for race day shoes in 2025, 2026, because these shoes will be the pinnacle of the Mizuno lineup in 2026 as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Strive for sponsoring this video. We have more in the pipeline coming for you. Actually recording one today. Let's put another stride comparison right here. And if you want to subscribe, click here. It's really helping us like this video, comment. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your run today. Enjoy your ride. Go beyond your limits. I will see you in the next one.